Good afternoon. My name is Brian Smack. I'm the manager of club safety here at Earth Networks. Um, with me is Julie Gaddy, uh, one of our chief me uh, meteorologists here. Uh, thank you for attending with us today. Uh, we are going to be talking about medical effects on lightning victims. So just in case you didn't know already, lightning is very dangerous and estimates show that 50 deaths happen per year in the U.S. Worldwide, 24,000 deaths occur each year and injuries to people worldwide, 240,000. So what are your odds? Well, they're a lot better than winning the lottery. One in 10,000 chance that you could get struck by lightning. So what happens if you observe somebody else getting hit by lightning? What do you do? Well, first of all, know that the person hit by the lightning is not a threat to carry any electrical charge. You can touch them. Obviously, call 911 and then make sure everything is safe. You might, they might be uh, in a state where they need help with CPR, first aid. Go try to do what you can to help the person. Pit them in a safe place if you can. Uh, and keep them down and don't touch or remove any of the burn clothing if there is burn clothing unless you absolutely have to. So talking about uh, medical effects uh, from being struck by lightning, um, it, it varies across the board. Um, obviously, you know, from lesser symptoms to long term, you know, delayed, um, knowing a few lightning strike victims uh, myself, um, you know, I've heard the gamut of, uh, you know, vision loss. Um, We'll talk a little bit here in a few minutes, but uh, my wife and I, we were actually struck by lightning 20 years ago yesterday. Um, and one of the effects that she uh, encountered was vision problems. Uh, she developed a cataract um, at the age of 24. So it was obviously 24 years old, uh, starting having uh, vision problems, went to her eye doctor and said, what's going on? And uh, long story short, it was, a, it was a cataract. And he had asked her what had happened. And she said a year prior, we were struck by lightning and he says that that's exactly a, 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 an occurrence could be you know, obviously from a lightning strike, but you know even like a, you know an electrical accident. Uh, but you know even speaking to other folks who I know where you know severe burns that you know that can occur, uh, memory loss, PTSD, um, you know all sorts of different things, depression, chronic pain, uh, vertigo. I know is another symptom as well. Um, my wife and I, Jessica, we were both very lucky uh, that we didn't uh, you know encounter really too many other of those long-term problems. So steps to recovery, um, you know, it's again, it, it, as I, like I said, I, this, my accident happened 20 years ago, and I think probably one of the best ways I was able to cope was obviously have a big support system, you know, through my family. Um, my wife and I, we were just dating at the time, so that was a, uh, you know, a big support there. Uh, was We were been dating for a month at that point, and then uh, we were engaged about eight months later. So needless to say, that, that brought us closer together. Um, but, you know, being able to talk about it, you know, I think for me that's been the biggest thing. Uh, you know, to kind of, you know, bring it to the forefront, you know, don't hide it. You know, it's, it's always good to talk more about it, I think. But, you know, you know, become an advocate, you know, learn about different things, learn what you can do to, to make yourself safe. Um, you know, again, like you said, you know, we say in step three, you know, find a physician, a friend, a survivor, someone who's, you know, who's been there who can listen. Um, and lastly, you know, have a good sense of humor about it. You know, as I look at it, you know, hey, what are the chances? You know, it, obviously it can't happen, but it's, you know, almost to a comical point of view where, Man, you know, what, what were the chances that was going to ha ever happen to me? So, you know, best way to look at it there. So talking more about my story, um, I was, my wife and I uh, and two other friends, we were struck on uh, June 27th, 1998, um, up in Lake George, New York. Um, I grew up up in the Adirondacks, uh, spent a lot of time, you know, on the golf courses. Uh, my father was a golf professional at a, at a resort up there. Um, I got into the golf business later on, but, you know, we were always outdoors, you know, whether it be skiing and hiking and camping, you know, boating, all sorts of different things. And um, happened one evening, uh, myself and, and our, you know, our, our friends, we decided to go camping one night and we were having a good time early in the evening and we went to bed. And the next thing I knew, I woke up um, with the EMTs coming into the tent. Um, you know, as I, I look back in 1998, 20 years ago, handheld cell phones were Kind of the new thing back then weren't really uh, just kind of coming online and I remember I had my mom's cell phone and we always just kept it on the boat whenever we went out and turned it on when we needed to uh, but you know we did have a phone on the boat uh, the girls were able to crawl to the boat they could not walk um, as a result of the strike they lost all feeling in their legs 
Um, I was knocked unconscious, um, and they said I was in uh, convulsions uh, after the strike. And our other friend, uh, sadly, who, who passed away, um, and I think you know, going back to look into the things you can do to, if you witness someone getting struck by lightning, you perform the CPR, you know, do a lot of things you can do to potentially help that person. Um, I was in the middle of the night with a lot of big storm going on and confusion. You know, I was out. The other ones were, you know, obviously severely injured as well. So it was hard to, you know, for one of us to take care of that situation. But uh, sadly, he did pass as a result of the strike. Uh, but, you know, just being aware, you know, we were in a position where we were camping on an island on the lake. As you see uh, down further to the south here is Lake George Village. We were up on Long Island up here. We were right about in the center where uh, about where the L is and the O. That was about the site where we were. Um, and, the, and the campsites are set up on a 12 by 12. They're like little wooden decks, like a platform. And the best we figure is the lightning hit the trees around us. There was a big bunch of pine trees surrounding the, the campsite. And the, and the lightning came up through the roots of the tree up underneath the tent. This is the best we you know, figure what happened. The bottom of the tent was all slashed. Uh, the sleeping bag was completely burned, um, blew a big hole out, blew the stuffing on the, life ja or the, the sleeping bags. Uh, but then this jacket, um, as you see here, and to this day, I should still have this. Um, I'll try to hold up as best as I can show you. But you can see where the lightning, it shredded a hole right through the jacket. Put a nice big shred hole through there. Uh, melted some of the uh, the nylon, you know, the, the straps on here. Um, so kind of gives you an example, hey, this is what it'll do to a jacket. Um, I, I was a, I'm a PGA golf professional as well. I, I worked in the, golf, in the golf business for about 15 years. And I would get in arguments all the time with, with members, guests, you know, when we would pull them off the golf course in a storm or they would start arguing why they couldn't play, I would quickly tell them, hey, <laughs> let me tell you my story real quick. And then I always had this jacket in my locker. I would show them that jacket and be like, this is what lightning will do, you know, and that usually woke them up pretty quickly um, to, uh, to show them what happened. But um, here's my wife and I, Jessica, today. Uh, this picture was taken last year. Um, so things are well. We have two, uh, two young boys who are 8 and 12. Um, you know, we couldn't be uh, you know, happier where we are in life right now. And, you know, as I've said, you know, talking about our incident, you know, for us has been the best thing we could ever do. And, you know, whatever we can do to help keep our folks safe. And I, I work in the, in the club space here for Earth Network. So, I'm, as I said, I'm the manager of club safety. So working with clubs, it, you know, implementing lightning alert systems, um, automated systems. But, you know, at the, it always comes down to, hey, look, what do we need to do to help keep your members, keep your staff, you know, your guests of the facility safe? Um, and that's, you know, what we work hard on, and, uh, and we do our best to make sure everyone is in the know of what happens. So we talk about uh, weather apps, you know, getting information. Um, the other thing I look back to, you know, 1998, we didn't have weather apps. We, had, we didn't have anything available to us. You know, we had the local weather forecast, um, and, you know, we, we always used uh, our local channel 13, WMYT, up in Albany, New York. Um, they were, you know, that was my source for my weather. It <laughs> was them. Um, but, you know, nowadays you have everything right in your pocket, right in your fingertips, you know, whether you're using the WeatherBug app, you know, some of the other ones out there, they are good. You're going get, to get good information from them, but you're not going to get the most up-to-date information from them. As I always, you know, tell folks, they're consumer-level, you know, applications. Yeah, they work. You're going to get some good information there. But, you know, having good professional-level uh, weather information available to you is the best thing you can possibly do to get real-time alerts, um, you know, see the real-time radar, you know, really, you know, being able to visualize lightning is probably the biggest thing. And being able to set those alerts, say, hey, I want to know when lightning was within 10 miles of me, of my, of my facility or my home or, you know, if you're camping, you know, whatever. You, you have the ability with our professional-level programs uh, to, uh, to get those alerts out, out to you. So one of the things that uh, we look at is when is the most dangerous part of the thunderstorm with respect to exposure to lightning. So what happens is people are outside, they might hear the thunder, they might even see flashes in the sky at night, but it's not raining and so they don't go inside. And as that storm gets closer and closer to you, that's when the danger rises because you think, oh, it's not raining, it's safe. When in actuality, the lightning is close enough to you that it could pose a danger. Once it starts raining, people go indoors and the risk and the number of casualties drops off. People take the shelter and that's the safest thing you can do. Go inside, go inside a car, go inside a building. Anywhere inside is good. 
But then it stops raining and some people look outside and say, like, hey, it stopped raining, I can go outside again. Well, the thunderstorm is still in the area and it's still lightning and that's potentially unsafe. So people go outside a little bit too soon when, before it's actually safe. And so that's another time where casualties tend to spike is people returning outside a little bit too soon. But as the thunderstorm moves further away uh, from where the person is, the danger does disappear. Once the storm is beyond five miles from you, that's, that's usually uh, safe. But every once in a while, there can be a lightning strike further away than that. And, uh, but just know that if lightning is in the vicinity, you want to be indoors. So that's the number one thing you can do. But what if you have nowhere to go? What if you're in the middle of a field somewhere? You're out in the open and there's nowhere to go. Well, try to get to the lowest place possible. Avoid any kind of tall object, whether it's a tree, a pole. Uh, get to the lowest spot you can. Um, if you're in a group, you know, spread out from each other. The closer you are, you can conduct the electricity among you. So try to stay a little bit separated so you're not touching each other. Um, you know, if you're camping, again, get to that lowest spot, the valley, the ravine, um, and stay away from water, stay out of the creek, stay out of the pool, um, stay away from any metal object, um, and those are going to conduct the electricity. So next up, we're going to just show you some real-time actual weather conditions here using our product uh, Spheric Maps. So just load this up. All right, so we're looking in the southeast this afternoon, and we're sh monitoring some thunderstorm activity stretching from north central Tennessee down into the Tennessee Valley, northern Alabama, and then down into the Atlanta area. Um, Spirit Maps allows you to show a lot of data all at the same time so you can visualize what's happening with these storms. So as we animate radar, you can see these storms are moving northwest to southeast here. Each one of these little colorful storm tracks identifies where the, the core of the storm is producing the most frequent lightning strikes, which are depicted in here, the, the, the purple shaded uh, markers there with the yellow markers depicting cloud to ground strikes. Those are the ones that are obviously the most dangerous. Uh, but the in cloud strikes also can be an indicator of severe weather. And uh, so what we do is we process that information and we create what's called a dangerous thunderstorm alert polygon. And what that does is help people know, hey, this storm has a lot of lightning. Storms with a lot of lightning are frequently heavy rain producers. And they can also be potentially severe, containing hail or strong wind gusts and, and sometimes tornadoes. Now these storms are primarily heavy rain producers today, but they have been producing a few gusts off and on and a few reports of hail. And um, so, um, and they're all also uh, continuing to move northwest to southeast. Um, and you'll see if you're living in this area, you definitely want to be inside. Um, also, if you get a lot of rain in the same area in a short period of time, that can create flash flooding. And flash flooding is obviously dangerous. You don't want to be traveling uh, across flooded waterways. Uh, definitely pay attention to the, the phrase, turn around, don't drown. I think what we pulled up here, we pulled up some of the, uh, the wind speed and directions. Uh, these little numbers, four, five, three. We had a wind gust of 23 miles an hour here. As you see, it's right on the edge of that front, front, front line of the storm there. Yeah, there's also, um, if, the, if the rain happens to go right over one of our, our sites, you can see rain rate information. Uh, it needs to be one of, uh, one of our special Earth Network sites. So maybe try uh, Iowa or uh, Atlanta area. There we go. Yep. There's some rain rates underneath the thunderstorms. Yeah, we, we rely heavily on our, on our uh, clients and our partners to put in stations that can help us monitor these real-time conditions. Um, and we're constantly growing our observing network uh, in order to capture these severe storms. So as we're getting back to Spirit Maps, um, this month uh, we are offering, or actually for the next 
the next several weeks, um, offering a 30-day uh, free trial for Spheric Maps. Um, as you saw, uh, just we had up and running uh, live and in person right there. Um, so obviously, as we said, it gives you great weather information, seeing able, being able to see the radar, seeing the lightning strikes. Uh, but through that as well, you can also create alerts uh, for yourself, um, you know, or your, you know, your facility, uh, where, you know, wherever, you know, facility, if you're at a facility, whether it be a golf course or a school or, you know, parks or governments, a lot of different entities that we work with, commercial businesses as well. Um, but, you know, you can create different alerts for, for different areas. Um, you know, hey, I want to know when lightning's within 10 miles. Uh, that's when I'm going to clear our facility. Uh, maybe get an alert at 20 miles to give me a heads up. Hey, there's some stuff out there. Um, you can have it set up to you know, shoot either an email or a text message out to the staff. But what we're offering, offer a 30-day free trial. Uh, please reach out to us. Uh, just email us at info at earthnetworks.com. Um, and we, from there, we will be able to uh, get you uh, set up on there, go with a little training to, to how to set up everything. Uh, it's one of those things, as I always say, once you play with it for a few minutes, uh, it's pretty easy to figure out. But um, it's a great, great piece of information, great tool. Um, I use it personally for myself all the time. Um, obviously, you know, if I'm on the golf course, um, I spend a lot of time on the water. I'm a, a very avid fisherman, so uh, being able to see weather is uh, very important to me. Um, you know, wind speeds and obviously storms that are moving in. So uh, looking at all those uh, detailed information, uh, it's a great tool to have. Um, but a little bit, a little more about Earth Networks. Uh, we've been around since 1993. Um, our headquarters are in Germantown, Maryland, just north of uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, we have the largest global environmental uh, observation network. Uh, we have about 10,000 weather stations uh, w worldwide uh, that are ours, are our weather stations. Um, and then we have about 1,500, I think almost 2,000 lightning sensors worldwide as well. So we have the world's largest lightning detection network. Um, so that's all our data. We're not getting anything from a third party. Everything is ours. Um, but, uh, you know, we were the creators of WeatherBug. Uh, we sold the Weatherbug brand in November 2016, uh, but we also we still continue to um, provide all, all the, the real-time weather data to the app. So um, even though we're not Weatherbug anymore, uh, we still we still control the data, and you're still getting the best information possible from there. But you know, key solutions that we work on: um, uh, outdoor learning systems, uh, weather stations, uh, the Spheric product maps, um, and then we also have uh, uh, Met Services as well, where um, like Julie here, uh, she works uh, on our Met Services side, and you know works with a lot of different government you know, agencies, you know, businesses, uh, Major League Baseball, NFL, uh, Major League—I think she said Major League Baseball, even the NHL. Um, they utilize us for all their outdoor winter winter hockey games. Um, I'm a big hockey fan, so that's a fun one for me. But um, you know, we work with a lot of different uh, commercial businesses, Six Flags, work with Disney, um, you know, John Deere, um, but even too, we work with NASA, the National Weather Service. Um, our network of, of weather stations and lightning s sensors are so vast, the National Weather Service actually uh, utilizes our data. Uh, we have more stations than they do, uh, so they're able to get real-time data um, right away at their fingertips uh, to be able to see everything there. So, um, Lightning Safety Week tomorrow is going to wrap us up uh, for everything. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to be talking about lightning safety and sports activities. Uh, that will be hosted by Mike Albergini and Andrew Rosenthal. They will be the ones... Uh, setting, uh, going through the whole thing tomorrow, um, but uh, stay tuned tomorrow, two o'clock, to uh, to join in. And we appreciate your time today. Thank you for uh, thanks for being with us. Have a good afternoon. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.